Okay, I'm um, going to do a quick overview of the Newton Second Law Lab. Um, what I'm going to do is actually collect the data and uh, I will show you the data on my paper um, after I finish each section. Uh, I will not calculate uh, the averages. You'll need to calculate the averages and you will also still need to graph both tables and you will also um, need to answer the following uh, analysis questions after graphing. So, uh, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, it, it says to uh, place a small piece of tape and lay out your um, meter stick like I have it here and I've got everything laid out ready to go. My little cart and my little spring scale tell me how much force I'm using. So uh, again if you look at your paper which hopefully you've already found on Google Classroom or Edmodo, it's the Newton Second Law Lab paper, you'll notice that I'm starting in table one where the constant mass uh, of 100 grams, which is this little bad boy right here, uh, it goes in the cart, <coughs> and I'm going to be varying the force, right, or changing the force, and we'll see how that affects it. So, the first data point is for one newton of force, so I'm going to hold on to the cart here, my start line to, to one newton, and I'm going to let it go. It's about <coughs> 7.5 centimeters. <clears throat> We're supposed to do two trials, so I'll go ahead and do another one. That one a little bit further. It's about 17 centimeters. So that is again why you do two trials. You want to make sure that their first set was not um, incorrectly done. So an average between two or more sets, really three would be more ideal, uh, would be um, a better way to collect data because it doesn't give you just one set of data. All right, so we're gonna keep moving on. I'm at two Newtons. It's at 21. The stream's gonna start getting in the way, so we're gonna have to start pulling this out of the way, but I'll show you how it works. Get our second data point. Yeah, that wasn't right. <clears throat> I don't really like that either. I don't think I think I'm releasing it incorrectly. So that looks a little better. 33. That seems a little high, but again, um, when we average out, it'll be fine. All right, let's go to three newtons. Thirty, and again I'll show you all this data once I finish collecting it but you can follow along with me if you prefer to do it that way more interactive whoa that one was way high 62 again um, it will average out to be a little bit uh, lower because we had 30 for the first one so. alright let's continue on we're on 4 newtons Fifty three, sixty six. All right, let's go to five Newtons. This is our last data point. We, we gotta get two trials, of course, but I released that wrong. Whoa, easy. Off the charts. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and collect that. That is 109. So a little bit beyond the meter stick. I had to use a ruler to go a little bit beyond it. So I couldn't catch that because it's out of frame, but that's okay. Let's try that one more time. That seems a little bit high, but let's hopefully we're going to average up. So I would expect it to be somewhere in the 80s range. So that's 66. So again, it'll average. Those are going to be good numbers for averages. So 
I'm going to focus in on the data real quick for table one. Hopefully you can see that. Come a little bit closer. Feel free to stop the video if you need to. I'm sorry, this is kind of a hokey way to show you uh, data. All right, that's all my data points for table one. Now, you will still need to calculate the average. And again, remember how that works. You're gonna add up the two data points uh, and divide that answer by two to get your averages. And remember, you'll only be graphing your average data. All right, let's move on to table two. <coughs> table two, we use the same force, but we vary the mass. So this time we're gonna be adding mass every single time. 100, 200 grams, 300 grams, and so forth. But we keep the force the same. You'll notice the first data point is 100 grams, and we're keeping that force at 5 newtons. Well, we just completed data with 100 grams and 5 newtons from table 1. It's the last data point. So I'm not going to recollect that data. I'm just going to reuse that data that I had from table 1. But it's the same thing. I had, when I'm saying the same thing, again, if you're not understanding, I used 5 newtons of force down here on my very last data point. I used 5 newtons of force down here and I had 100 grams in it already so I'm just going to reuse these data points. So I just entered them right up here. So now I'm going to increase my mass to 200 newtons. <clears throat> I'm sorry, 200 grams, apologize. Keeping my force at 5. That seemed a little messed up. I'm going to try that again. I think I Mess that up. No, I'm not releasing it correctly. But again, beautiful, beautiful thing about the video is I'm doing it so you know that it's. I know when it's incorrect. That's pretty good. 55. So 55 centimeters. Let's continue on. I'm gonna do another trial of that. Confirm our data. Help it average out. about 61 that's looking pretty all right so now we're going to go to 300 grams so i have the 200 gram mass in there now i'll add the 100 gram in here that makes it 300 of course so we'll go ahead and continue along with our data Forty-six. should be noticing what's going on again Big reinforcer of Newton's second law. 64. So what you should be noticing is overall, now it's going less and less. And the rationale is, of course, if the force stays the same, but the mass increases, then it doesn't accelerate as much, and therefore it doesn't go as far. So that's the whole point of the lab. So let's go to 400 grams. 42. Second trial. At least that wrong. 39. One more with 500 grams. All right, increasing the mass. Hopefully you can tell that's a 500 gram mass, the big one. So, all right. And if we're using the same force and increasing the mass, we, would sh we should expect that the car is not gonna go as far, and it doesn't, 37. Okay, I'm done collecting my data. 
I'm going to show you real quick what these um, this last data table looks like up close. Hopefully you can see those numbers. I'll back that up a little bit because it's a little bit too close. Uh, you'll still need to find the averages. Remember, add up these two ver these two data points, divide by two to get your averages, and uh, and don't forget that you will be graphing your averages. So let's speak about your graphs briefly. Uh, if you look at question number one, it tells you how to construct these. Construct a bar graph of average distance versus force, and a graph of average uh, distance versus mass. So uh, if you flip your paper over, you'll see the two graph papers. And I'll briefly show you how to set these up. Because force was the variable we were changing in the first table, force will be on the independent axis, right, or independent variable, and it will therefore be on the x axis. Independent variable always goes on the x. So you're going to go forces down here, and then what we actually measured is what's called our dependent variable, and that would be average distances over here. Remember, what you change on purpose in the lab is the independent variable. You're free to change it. It therefore goes on the x-axis. On the second part of the uh, lab, we change the mass. Because we were changing the mass, that is the independent variable. So again, it goes on the x. And what we were actually measuring was, again, the average distances. Average distances uh, were the... Uh, is the dependent variable on both graphs. So you're gonna make bar graphs. I'm not gonna sit here and graph it for you. I know you know how to graph. You're gonna make bar graphs with your average distances on your y-axis and your, uh, you'll have five bars for force and five bars for mass. When you um, 